What would happen if you ate one sweet potato every day for 30 days? Well, let's go ahead and jump right into this. The first thing that you would notice is going to be a digestive benefit. And I say this because the data does demonstrate that it only takes one or two days to start noticing the digestive effect of a sweet potato. In fact, there was a study that was published in the journal Cancer Nursing. They took a look at leukemia patients that were going through chemotherapy. And if you've dealt with chemotherapy before, you know those people deal with a lot of constipation, a lot of bowel issues. What they found here is that adding in 200 grams of sweet potato corrected their bowel issues in less than two days. Within two days, their constipation improved and their digestion improved compared to the group that did not have the sweet potato. So the reason that I mentioned that is because this probably is the quickest thing you'll notice. Okay, when you're talking just 200 grams of sweet potato, 80% of that is insoluble fiber. That is very, very potent when it comes down to overall just digestion. But there's a secondary effect that happens a little bit longer term as well. Now the cool thing is, if you look longer term, there's an interesting effect that happens when you consume sweet potatoes that's independent of just the fiber. So with this, we look at a study that was published in the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry. It's very interesting because in this case, they took the anthocyanins, the antioxidants that are in sweet potatoes, and they treated gut bacteria with that. And they noticed that the bad bacteria died off and the good bacteria flourished. And we ultimately were left with more butyrate producing bacteria. Now, butyrate producing bacteria are the best kind of bacteria that we can have in the gut. So with this, we're in a really good spot. So we have a short-term benefit when it comes down to constipation, digestion, but then we have a longer-term effect on the gut microbiome that is completely independent of the fiber in and of itself. Now, the next thing that you might notice, this is gonna be something that you'd notice maybe four or five days after having a sweet potato daily, is you'd start to notice reductions in your joint pain and you'll probably notice improvements in your complexion. And the reason behind this is, and again, it's not just the fiber, it more so has to do with the potent antioxidants that are in sweet potatoes. So specifically, we're talking about anthocyanins. Now, anthocyanins are tremendous when it comes down to reducing oxidative stress. So oxidative stress is the stress that's created from, well, any kind of stress, just the stress of fuel metabolism, the stress of life, the stress of workouts. It creates these rogue electrons that circulate through our body and they react with different things. And when they react with different things, they essentially cause this stress and oxidation. So what's interesting is anthocyanins that are in sweet potatoes are one of the most potent antioxidants that we can get in food. So this manifests a lot in how our skin looks and feels. It manifests a lot in our joint pain and reductions of inflammation there. And if you start looking at recovery, like trying to get more of an overall sport benefit or just a workout benefit, it's interesting because there was a study that looked specifically at this as well. So this study was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology. Had subjects run for seven days, seven days of running, okay? And they gave them a high or a low sweet potato polyphenol treatment. Okay, so they had low polyphenols or high polyphenols. And they had them go for a run at 70% of their VO2 max. And then they measured blood levels of oxidative damage, polyphenol content, and a couple other things immediately after exercise and a couple hours after exercise. The results are pretty interesting. They found there was an increase in antioxidant capacity, meaning they had more antioxidants available, but also dramatic reductions in oxidative stress, leading to better recovery. Okay, so that's something that you would notice probably inside of five to seven days. If you're working out a lot and you're normally getting sore and you don't feel like you're recovering that well, you might find that a sweet potato actually helps you out. And it's not because of the carbs, it's not because of the fiber, it's more so because of the antioxidants. Now the next piece that you would notice might be something that takes more like a week to kick in. And that's gonna be the memory and the cognition benefit. And the research here is pretty powerful. So in the short term, you have these improvements in spatial memory and working memory. Over the longer term, there's actually prevention of cognitive decline. So you actually get better off as far as preventing neurodegenerative conditions. So with this, we look at a study that was published in Molecular Medicine Reports. Okay, it is a rodent model study. They took rats and they induced a lot of neuroinflammation, inflammation in the brain, by giving them a very high fat diet. So a high calorie, high fat diet. And what they found when they divided rats into a high fat diet, a high fat diet with sweet potatoes, 
or a uh, sweet potato diet only is that the group that had the high fat diet that had the sweet potatoes with it ended up having protection against the inflammation that came from the high fat diet. So it reduced cyclooxygenase enzyme two, it reduced tumor necrosis factor alpha, it reduced interleukin six. Essentially what it did is it reduced the brain inflammation that was associated with a bad diet. So what this tells us that as far as the brain is concerned, sweet potatoes could be very protective against somewhat of a bad diet. So I'm not suggesting that you go eat a terrible diet, but adding a sweet potato into the mix might actually help you out quite a bit. Then they also saw there was increases in their working memory. So it actually improved memory at the same time while protecting against inflammation. Then there was a study published in Dementia and Neurophysiologia. This was interesting because it looked at sweet potato extract and they found that sweet potato extract was good for protecting the brain longer term. So again, decreasing inflammation, but also increasing BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor. So essentially it helped the brain produce more neurons, more overall just network. So by having an increase in BDNF, the brain cells can literally grow more. So short term, you'll notice improvements in memory and cognition. Long term, who knows, you might actually even get smarter. There's also some really interesting benefits as far as fiber is concerned when it comes down to the brain. We forget that the more diverse our gut microbiome, the more impact it has on our brain. So you remember we have this thing called the gut-brain axis. Our gut communicates with our brain via multiple different pathways, predominantly via the vagus nerve. Okay, so this gut-brain axis means healthy gut, healthy mind. You've probably heard that talked about before. So the more that we can add good fibers in and antioxidants that are supportive of the good bacteria in our gut, the more that we are able to have healthy serotonin levels helping our brain feel better. So overall for mood and for memory and all these things, sweet potatoes have a secondary impact as well. That's why I'm always such a big fan of having a diverse diet and getting a diversity of fibers into your diet however you can. People also ask a lot with this if a probiotic would help if the gut bacteria is something that's so important. And the short answer is yes, especially if you're really starting to make a change. So if you're trying to impact your gut bacteria in a positive way and you haven't been eating healthy for a longer period of time, then it is a good idea to add a probiotic in because it kind of kickstarts everything. I put a link down below for a company called Seed. That's really the only probiotic that I would recommend these days. It has a capsule inside of a capsule. So if you look at it, it's really unique. Like it literally has a small capsule inside of a larger capsule. So you're getting proper staging. So you're getting the proper delivery and the proper potential colonization of the bacteria. So it's what's called a symbiotic. It has prebiotic fibers and the probiotics in it. Okay, so very unique stuff. So anyway, that link down below will save you 15% off your entire order through Seed if you wanna try their symbiotic. And they also have something called PDOS08, which is their kids probiotic as well, which is very, very interesting. So that link down below, just below this video, top line of the description. Between seven and 14 days in, you might start noticing an improvement in your sleep. Now, a lot of the data here is somewhat speculative, but we do know the correlation between fiber and sleep. Now, for one, a more diverse microbiome can help you sleep, and more fiber can help you sleep in that way. But the fiber in a sweet potato could also help you out when it comes down to preventing the blood sugar crashes that wake you up in the middle of the night. Now, it's not the blood sugar crash itself that wakes you up. It's when your blood sugar goes low, and your brain glucose goes low, so the body reduces, produces adrenaline and cortisol to wake you up. When this happens, obviously, you're, you're waking up and you're trying to get more blood sugar into the bloodstream so that you can survive because the body is sounding the alarms. So with this, you start to notice, okay, more fibers in the diet, this isn't as much of an issue. There's also just enough of an insulin spike in a sweet potato to help you sleep. Okay, you need a little bit of insulin to allow tryptophan to get into the brain. And additionally, sweet potatoes are also high in tryptophan. Remember, tryptophan converts into serotonin, which then converts into melatonin. And that whole process cannot happen unless insulin is present to allow the tryptophan into the brain in competition with other amino acids. So just the right amount of carbohydrates to help you sleep. Then there's also a bunch of potassium and vitamin B6 which is required for melatonin production 
Not to mention there's a bunch of magnesium, which is really good for GABA production. GABA is what makes your brain feel calm and it's really the state you wanna be in, especially in the evening time. A little bit more of a longer term thing that you might notice 20, 30, even 60, 90 days later on down the line is going to be a cardiovascular benefit. And with this, we turn to some rodent model data, but still very interesting stuff. There was a study that was published in the journal Life. Now, this was done on hamsters, but still really interesting. They gave these hamsters a high cholesterol diet, and they gave them sweet potato leaf extract because the leaves of the sweet potato have a higher concentration of those antioxidants. What they found was very, very cool. Not only did the sweet potato leaf extract reduce their overall cholesterol levels, it also reduced their LDL levels between 30 and 48%. Now, no matter where you stand in the whole world of LDL cholesterol being good, bad, ugly, indifferent, the fact that it's reducing cholesterol and reducing LDL in a high cholesterol diet is hugely impactful. But they also had decrease in their atherogenic index, meaning their overall cardiovascular disease risk factors had gone down. And they noticed that their antioxidant score went up and their reactive oxygen species, oxidative stress, went down. And the researchers speculate that it has to do mostly with the reactive oxygen species and the fighting of oxidative stress as to why sweet potatoes had this benefit. So it's not because of the fiber, it's not because it's a plant, it's because the antioxidants seem to have a powerful effect on our cardiovascular system. Now this next study is a little bit longer term and we're talking about metabolic health. This was a 12 week study. So this would be something that you might notice if you stuck with having a sweet potato every day for a long time. Okay, the study was published in Diabetes Care, and they found that when subjects had just four grams of sweet potato daily for 12 weeks, they had significant reductions in HbA1c, reductions in their fasting glucose, and reductions in their two-hour postprandial glucose. So when you look at the world of insulin resistance, it's easy to think, oh, I don't wanna have carbohydrates at all. Carbohydrates are gonna cause a problem. When in reality, it's the kind of carbohydrate you have that could be the problem. Sweet potatoes are still relatively high glycemic index, but what's interesting about sweet potatoes is because of the antioxidants, you're granted a little bit of amnesty with them. So it's not all about GI, it's about what is actually in this food itself. So longer term, taking care of our metabolic health could be a very huge thing. The good news is, a small sweet potato, you're only looking at 30 or 40 grams of carbohydrates. So you don't need to go all the way and go ham and have 200 grams of carbs. Even if you're doing a low carb diet, by having one sweet potato at night, you're still well within the realm of a low carb diet. You're just getting all the benefit, plus the benefits of low carb too. So don't hate on me for talking about the carbs, when in reality, it might be something that's really good for your diet. I'll see you tomorrow.